So before I begin my presentation, I want to ask myself a question. What do I know? And after 17 years of life, I want to say that I have a very good grasp on a lot of knowledge and information through the accumulation of years. But I begin to notice, my knowledge is not equally distributed among the different areas of knowledge as well as the subjects I've learned in school, such as mathematics, natural sciences, and social sciences, and so on. And I start to see a trend. In the subjects where I have the most interest in, I see my knowledge has a constant growth, where the knowledge I learn in the current year will add on to the knowledge I've learned in the previous year, and usually there's no loss. But in the subjects where I have the least interest in, I see my knowledge is like a roller coaster. It goes up and down, and usually around summer, it plummets drastically. And when the new year begins, it rises. And I have to come to the conclusion, motivation plays a huge part in not only what I know, but the depth to which I know it. So, what is motivation? Motivation is defined to be the need, want, or desire that propels someone or an organism in a certain direction. It answers the question of why. It's the gold at the end of the rainbow. It's the force that causes you to succeed. And there are two main types of motivation I want to focus on today. Internal motivation, when someone does something for their own sake, and external motivation, when an outside force causes you to act. And this brings me to the question I want to answer. How does this impact my knowledge, more specifically, internal and external motivation? So to begin with, external motivation, or extrinsic motivation. And the best way that I can explain this is, pretend you're on a mule, and you're holding a stick. And at the end of the stick, you've tied a carrot at the end. And you put the stick in front of the mule's face. What do you think it's going to do? It's going to walk. And this is exactly how external motivation works. It's dependent on a reward system, where someone will do whatever they have to in order to get a certain reward or carrot, per se. And in regards to learning, it can be a variety of things, such as avoiding punishment, pleasing others, such as your parents, or something more material, such as a prize or reward. And I see that this poses a huge dilemma to the acquisition of knowledge. A person will only learn what is necessary, or the only facts, in order to get the A or the reward, and this creates what is called a baseline knowledge. You only know the superficial details, you only know the on-the-surface facts, and I think that this, is very, this poses a huge problem. But another problem I see is that what happens in external motivation is when you remove the carrot in front of the meal space, what do you think it's going to do? It's going to stop. And this is exactly what external motivation does to you. You stop learning, you stop conditioning your knowledge, you stop looking further, and when someone isn't motivating you from the outside, you have no purpose in learning anymore. And I think this brings me to the biggest problem external motivation poses. Short-term knowledge. Knowledge that isn't permanent. And I've had experience with this type of knowledge many times before. And one memory that I have that I really see myself having very short-term knowledge is when I was an incoming freshman in high school. And I would say I was very ambitious. I was kind of greedy, I would say. I wanted to take the hardest classes possible. I wanted to get ahead of the game. I wanted to be one of the top students. Obviously, as I progressed through high school, my mindset has very much changed. But nevertheless, when I was a freshman, I was very ambitious. And one of the hardest classes that was offered as a freshman was AP Human Geography. And this class was very wonderful, but at the same time very challenging. I wasn't used to APs, I wasn't used to the way the curriculum was set, and I wasn't used to being forced to answer questions on demand for because I was very introverted. And for an introverted person, that was kind of terrifying in many ways, and I couldn't articulate answers faster, fast. But what I saw was the tests were very unique for me as well, and they impacted how I performed. And we had a very unique test structure, and they were usually a two-part test. One day was multiple choice, and the other day was an essay test. And what my teacher would do is he would post all the prompts for the test about a weekend, um, no, not a weekend, of when the unit began online. And he would choose one of the prompts on the day of the essay test, and he would make us write it. And what I would do to prepare for this test was about a weekend before the essay test, I would pull up all the prompts on my computer, and I'd write huge outlines for them using the book. And then I'd close my laptop and not touch it again until the day before the essay test. And what I would do was I would print out all these outlines, I'd sit on my couch, and I would memorize them for many hours. And on the day of the essay test, whichever he chose, I would regurgitate everything I knew onto the piece of paper 
walk out the room and not know a single thing I wrote. And what was funny was people would actually ask me throughout the day of what I wrote, because that's just what high school students do. And I would just kind of go, eh, and then silently walk away in shame. And I look back on my experience, and I really regret not putting my own time and effort into the class. I was so externally motivated in getting the A and not being penalized during class discussions that I didn't realize how interesting the subject was. AP Human Geography is a very interesting class, and the class discussions were interesting just as much. But I was so focused on getting grades that I forgot about what the class really, the purpose of the class really was, learning. And I think that this brings up a concept that many high school students experience sometime in their high school career, playing the system. Students are able to get A's throughout the whole year and possibly even a five on the AP test and come out of the class knowing almost little to absolutely nothing about what the class was about. And how is this possible? I think in today's education system, students are so focused on getting grades that we forget about what the class really means. We let a single letter define who we are. And I think that myself and my friends included are also so focused on getting grades that we forget about what the class really is. It's about the learning process. It's about the journey. It's about getting something valuable out of the class. And I think this really brings up what the true purpose of external motivation is. It's to accomplish a goal. It's a means to an end and nothing more. A quote I really like is right here. And, oh, right there. <laughs> and it says, you have to go wholeheartedly into anything in order to get anything worth having. Frank Lloyd Wright. And I really like this quote because it really embodies what internal motivation can offer. Unless you're able to put your own personal effort into something, you won't get anything long-lasting, anything permanent, anything you can carry on for the rest of your life. And internal motivation works in many unique ways. And I think that this graph really demonstrates how it works. As internal motivation increases, we see that tacit knowledge increases with it. And tacit knowledge, if you don't know, is a comprehensive understanding of something. You can't just transfer it to somebody else just by verbalizing it or writing it down because it's comprehensive in nature. It requires a deep level of understanding. And we see that as internal motivation increases, we see that tacit knowledge increases with it and the type of work that can be achieved from tasks to skills to innovations in that order. Innovations, being able to create something from yourself, something original, using your creativity, the application knowledge, taking knowledge to the next step. And I see that internal motivation brings so many benefits, especially four main things that it offers. The feeling of accomplishment, when your passions and values align with your goals. Competence, when whatever you're able to achieve is from your own abilities. Progress, when whatever you do is working towards a positive outcome. And lastly, autonomy. When someone isn't breathing down your shoulder, when you are doing something for yourself and only you. And I came up with this concept called investing in yourself. Putting your knowledge into a bank and letting interest over time uh, increase the amount of knowledge you have, and at the end, coming out of the class with more knowledge than you ever began with. And to continue with Angela Lee Duckworth and her, and her theory on how grit becomes the key to success, and if you weren't listening, Angela Lee Duckworth is a psychologist, and after, um, teaching, uh, after being a math teacher, she went on to study on her concept called grit. Now, what is grit? Grit is the perseverance and passion to accomplish long-term goals, and her study showed that the grittiest students were able to have the biggest potential to succeed not only at school, but later in life and in any setting. And I really like this quote she says, live life like it's a marathon, not a sprint. And as a past runner, I can very much identify with the perseverance and determination needed in order to finish a long-distance race. And if you don't know, a marathon is a very long race. External motivation can get you to the starting line, and maybe even to the halfway point. But you start to have an internal struggle and an internal conflict. You start, and, it's, and I think people really underestimate how much of a mental sport running is. You start to think, am I going to pass out? Should I pull out or should I just fall behind because at this point I just don't care anymore and I'm so tired. And I've had this experience many times before, but every single time 
on numerous occasions, I've been able to get out of this mindset. How? Because I was able to find the personal drive to finish what I started. Because I want to finish this for myself, not for my wonderful coach, nor my amazing teammates, but because I wanted to finish what I started. And my desire to finish what I started was able to give me the perseverance and passion to make it to the finish line. So before I end my presentation, I want to bring up an iconic poem written by Robert Frost called The Road Not Yet Taken. And I think most of us already know the most famous line in this poem is that two roads diverge in a yellow wood. And these roads represent life options. I want to remind you that there are limitless pathways and roads not even seen in this picture. So I want to urge you to choose a pathway or road that inspires you to succeed and motivates you to develop a knowledge of great depth and capacity. Even if it means chopping down a couple of trees and enduring through the tribulation, cost, and pain. Because in the end, wherever you are, I can't promise you'll be exactly where you want to be or how long it's going to take to make it to the end. But I can, but for me, I strongly believe progress will be made. And as Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do it. Thank you.